All right, guys, so I'm getting this back going here. So a while back, I painted these white uh, with, I don't even know what. It might have been, I don't know what it was. It's white. Because uh, they were obviously black. This is primer black, so I love this black paint. It's primer, and it looks like a nice satin paint, but it's actually um, the Mr. Hobby um, finishing primer, uh, the 15. If I can find it, I'll show you. This stuff here is, I love it. That's what this is. I like this for trim, and it's durable. It covers fast because it's primer. And I'll tell you what, you guys want to use a great product for something like this. I mean, look at that. It's got a nice sheen to it. It, it works great. Love it. Obviously, some of these pieces, we you know, detail it without, you can't do it over top of black. So that's like a suppressor. I don't really know what that is, but in the kit, it's red. Uh, they show it red. So what I'm going to do is paint uh, these little valves on top in chrome. And then we're going to use, to me, Italian red. And we're going to paint the rest of it red on top of the white. So it should cover pretty good. So I like doing these first because it's easy just to let the brush come up. Uh, just as an example, just let the brush come up around this and just let it go around that versus painting it and then try to mile it over top of it. So I'm just going to go up against it like so. And we're going to brush paint it real quick. But I'm going to do this first because even if I can go all the way down the side and then I have to paint around it, that's not a big deal. It's easier to do it this way first versus going the other way. Now, the other thing, too, with the Molotol, you obviously have to let this set and dry because uh, you can't put this right over top and then paint because once that paint hits that Molotol, uh, while it's still wet, uh, it's kind of game over at that point. So we'll get a little heavy coat in here and here. If you can even see that, probably not. Not sure why I'm getting too carried away with it because I think once the car is together, uh, this top will probably never come back off. Yeah, so we're going to do that. So this here, we're going to leave it this weird color, but I'm going to paint the side of this... Um, in a silverish gray uh, and then do black stripes now once I get this painted red I'll go back through with the black and I'll touch up the sides I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yet um, it's kind of an afterthought that's where we're at with that so this here uh, I'm gonna do the black tank stripes but I'm gonna leave that top kind of weird looking like that kind of like make it look like a transparent um, thing so I'm just gonna use a sharpie for this I'm cheating yes we just can use a sharpie I know it's like come on man well, I get it, but um, it's effective. It works good. Sometimes Sharpie doesn't look that good because depending on what you're doing on it, it almost has like a purple hue to it if you look really close to it. I'm not going to go all the way down just because I know I'm going to hit the white down on the bottom. And I don't want to do that. It's, it's just mainly if you look through the window in the back window, you can see there's like straps holding that down. That's the same way. We're going to paint these down to the side and then uh, I'm just going to brush paint on the top my shop is too fat it won't go down in the hole i guess that's the best she's gonna get all right a little sloppy sloppy but we'll fix it we'll fix it all right so we're gonna leave that like that this is the top of this black looks like some kind of cap of plastic of some sort not really sure so i'm gonna give that red a try we'll see if we can work up to it so we'll find me a fancy brush that'll lose the job here i'm gonna say this guy's gonna be our winner for today and I, I, it sounds goofy, but I like to take the brush and kind of do like a dry run. Like, will this fit in here okay? Will this do the job? Is this too big? See, to me, this brush is going to do just fine. So we're going to put some LP21. This is the Tamiya Italian Red. I thought I had some regular red here, but I got flat red. I got dull red. I want this gloss red, so we're going to do a gloss red. So being this is red on top of the white, it may take a couple applications um, red's kind of one of those weird pigment colors that takes a bit, but it may, it may cover good. I guess we'll find out here in a second. Obviously it's going to take two applications. So I'd probably been smart if I would have originally painted this, uh, like a, like a primer red or pink or something like that. So I'm going to do the top kind of heavy cause this is a uh, lacquer. So the lacquer is going to dry fast. So I don't want a bunch of like brush marks in it cause that's what's going to happen. It's like I say, it's easier to go up against that once it's this stage versus doing it the other way. So even though I'm putting this on a little heavy, I can go back, back once this dries. It'll be an easy touch-up with the primer black. A little redundant and going back and forth with it, probably, but that's how we're going to do it. So that doesn't look too bad. This is the LP13. This is the IJN Gray. Uh, I believe that's for the Imperial Japanese Navy, if I'm correct on that. 
just to give it a different contrast, I was going to do a flat aluminum on here, but I thought I'll do this color here. Uh, it'll look nice against the silver because it'll be a different uh, contrast to it. Just something to stick out. I'm not looking to over detail this. Cause like I say, I don't know if the body will ever come off in it. And I've been really debating on gluing the nose on it, that front clip. I know I shouldn't, but the kit actually has some warpage to it. As you can see here, this needs to come down quite a ways. And the body actually has some twists on it also. I did not notice the body had it on there until it was putting the decals on. And I thought, hmm, this thing got a little bit of wobble to it. Even the front nose here, um, that's got quite a bit of twist to it as well. So, I don't know. We'll see how it sits when it's all said and done. Uh, right now, it's just an open suggestion to it. I don't know. It may happen. It probably won't, but it sounds good. So, we'll give this a little whirl here. And so, this does. Next time, I'm, I'm going to leave the top white. I'm just going to go around the edge here. I like hand painting things at times. Um, the only problem you can run into, if you, if you keep going over the same spot, like trying to keep brushing it, you're going to activate whatever is underneath, and then you're going to just start mixing colors. Unless you originally started with a, like a water-based color and acrylic, you know, where it's not going to reactivate it, and then you're usually good, but... Okay, so that's it for that. I got to fix that white on the top. I got too heavy with the black. I knew that was going to happen. So we're just going to go white. I get a smaller brush. Okay, we're going to let that set for a little bit and dry. So we're going to take the black. We're going to go around and touch up our spots here. Hopefully that red's dry enough. Uh, being a lacquer, I, I would think it's dry, dry, dried out right now, but... I could be wrong, but we're going to find out. So this primer is nice because you can brush it. You can do pretty much whatever with it. Kind of feather it a little bit. So hopefully it dries naturally so you don't see that line. It probably will. Okay, so we're going to set this off to the side. That's looking pretty good. We'll let that black dry out a little bit more. So I blend it in pretty nice. Uh, it's obviously not airbrushed, but you, if you wick that brush strokes out just a little bit, it blends pretty decent. So we're going to leave that like that for now. We're just going to let her sit in the, in the side and dry the rest of the way. And we're going to move on to some other small painted pieces that we need to install. Uh, this guy here, I had to touch up the inside. I didn't realize this stands up. I thought it was just this side. I thought it faced down. This actually stands up like this in the car. Like that. And I thought, oh, well, if I take the nose off, you can see the front of it. And I didn't paint it. And I really hate to mix up that little bit of black just to shoot that with the airbrush so I just hand painted it. So that's going to go on the front. So after that is installed the rack and pinion uh, front end goes on there. Okay guys so we're getting the front suspension glued in. So we have that in there. So they give you four glue points but I actually glued it across the top here because obviously this is holding the suspension in. So I figured those four little points is just a guide. Uh, so like I say I put glue all the way across the sides. Uh, so it holds it on pretty nice. And we got this piece here in. It's kind of like your radiator setup. So we got the engine kind of somewhat going here. Uh, these engines were green. I want to let that paint. I, I didn't have this painted, so I had to paint that real quick. Uh, I just took Sharpie and did the simulated plug wires on it. And I also painted the seat. Uh, I had it painted before, but I painted some seat belts in there. And I used the um, flat red for the seat belt. Uh, that was an LP79. So that worked out pretty good. And I took Molotol. And I know most race cars don't have chrome buckets in it. You know, I get that for the glare. But I thought it looked cool. And it says Recaro up here in the seat. And I thought, you know, that'd look really cool if I could read that. So when I do this Recaro, I want the letters to stand out. So this was white plastic. So this is a points file for anybody that knows anything about automotive ignition. They use these back in the day for cleaning points on your ignition. Points and condenser. Um, this is a points file. So any file would work. So this was white plastic. So I'm just going to scrape the paint off this. And we're going to just reveal the letters for that Recaro. Just because I think that looks cool. Cool. I'll go back with my rubber black and just touch it up around there. Actually, I could probably just do the line around there. That'd look pretty cool too, I guess. And we'll just leave it all one shot. Of course, I scratched the rest of it. Here, something like that. I was taking touch up the rest of that on around the edge there. Left the rubber black with what I painted originally. And that looked pretty good. Alright guys, so getting this engine put in. This sits in there pretty simple. They just have a little notch here. Notch in the back. And it basically just sits between these two notches here and to here. 
So a pretty simple setup. And then have you put the exhaust on. So I actually put the exhaust on, I, I glued it in, and I just set the engine where I wanted it. And then I glued, I held this down and I glued the exhaust on. And I let the exhaust dry first without doing it that way. Now it's nice and sturdy for me. Don't have to worry about it moving around. So we did a little orange color in there to give it a little bit of burnt look on the back side of the turbo. Um, probably could did, did a little more up on the top, I guess, but looks all right. So we're going to get this glued in and go from there. So the seat's all nice and dried, so we'll get that put in next. Like I said, I know the seat belts aren't probably a legit thing, but that's okay. They are in my car. I think I'll add a little more orange to that. I think that looks nice. That looks really nice on the bottom where it's got kind of that burnt look to it. I think I'll do some of that up top before I glue that in, just to make sure it's all good. So once again, I just use some LP53. Uh, I'm not even going to airbrush it. You can almost dry brush it. looks just as good if you guys don't airbrush and you kind of like this look. Um, airbrushing obviously is the way to go with it, but you do have a lot of control when you do it with the with the brush. You just really have to, like, like say, almost like dry brush it. So I'm going to do just right here where the pipe goes, and that's it. So I don't want to overdo it. You know, that can get. So if you just wipe it easy... You see, I get that kind of cool effect. Go too heavy with it, and then you kind of like, oops, went too far. A little bit on the compressor side. I'll try to get it heavier down in that corner right there, right down here. Something like that. Give it a little more of a darker hue in the center. Give it some more depth. There, we'll leave it just like that. And now we can mount it in there. Okay, we got that engine assembly sitting in. Uh, next I have is put the firewall. So I did mine in the silver. It's kind of how I was looking at it on the box art. Uh, I started doing holes in there and I thought, you know what? That's going to take me a long time. And I thought, you know, if I was going to do that, the best way would be would be just to cut this out and just put a piece of mesh screen in there. That'd be the coolest thing to do, but... Um, I don't have anything that would look good to fit in there without like notching the whole thing. And plus I'm not sure what's going on because this side here is mesh all the way across and this side's only to here. So I don't know if it'd be better just to cut this half out. So I thought it looked goofy, so I didn't do it. Wasn't sure what they were trying to say on that, but we're just going to leave it at that for now. So this guy sits here. I'm going to do a quick test fit. Always test fit guys. You know that just to make sure, just to make sure. You just never know. A little bit on the ends, so we don't... Before I set that, I could probably put a little bit right here, just to help center that up a little bit. I always tell when you get to the bottom of these, they start getting stringy and not working the best for you. Okay, just looking cool, looking cool. Yes, looking good, looking good. All right, per instructions, they have us put the seat, the pedals, and the rear axle in. So we have Mr. Axle here. Got that done up. I didn't go too crazy in this because with the body on it, you're really not going to see a lot of it. We'll put my cool seat in there. We'll cut my handle off that we use the hand to everything. And I'm not even going to bother trimming that. Yes, I know I probably should, but once it's in the car, you are not going to see that at all. So, so the pedals, they are like a chrome. I did the black on them, uh, stripped them, put the black on, and then I used the Elklade stainless on them but i just did like a i didn't go all the way across with it i just did a i don't know what you want not a dry brush but just enough to say i did it so this older kit it's kind of nice because everything on it is such a positive fit i mean they got big dowels big holes you really can't okay you can screw it up but you'd have to put some effort into it you know what i mean it's not like that like some kits where they're just like yeah that's cool it's almost like a glorified snap kit you know where it's not pretty hard to mess up where things go which is nice i like that because it makes it simple uh it's positive you know what's there you know the deal see now actually i would have put this in first just because i can't get my fingers in there so that gives those petals kind of a, it's chrome but it gives it kind of that black chrome look so that's kind of cool i like that all right i'm going to trim the seat because it, it drives me nuts knowing that but i'm not going to touch it up at least i trimmed it like I say once again you got some nice positive stops here so we'll do a quick see how it sits and it sits like so very nice so we'll just do some here little day will do you 
a little more dabs for getting the end of this tube because I'm really squeezing the I feel like I'm about ready to put my fingers to the side of it but I'm trying to get every last drop out of it what's that the coffee commercial is that a uh, Folgers good to last drop it's kind of way my glue is all right rear axle so once again like it's tiny huge pins obviously huge holes and then the front of the differential sits right on that pin there very easy so we're going to put this in and then we can put the rest of that interior tub in there. So we're going to put quite a bit in here because obviously this holds the car up. And they give you kind of a negative push on it because it's, you know, the car is being held up. But there's nothing, usually this would be the opposite way. There's nothing on top to help hold it. See, now I have a little twist in my chassis right here. So that tells me right now she's going to be a three-wheeler. So the chassis needs to go down like that. So she's got a little bit of a bend to it. Probably should have strained it. Yes, probably. Why I didn't? Once again, another great, great question. Okay, we're going to let that set for a minute. So this turned out pretty cool. She's good enough. That looks decent. So once again, we got our positive stops here. Those are going to fit in these holes here. So the nice thing about this is why that's still, just in case I have to shimmy it a little bit, I can still move that. Uh, and then you got two pieces here that snap into those two holes. Very nice, very simple. Before I put this on here, I'm going to put the shift around it. Just because it'd be easier now versus later in life. So the shifter I just left all black. I um, really don't know best solution for that. I, I probably should do like a... I don't know. I'd, maybe I'll just leave it black. You ever have that pair of tweezers just not your favorite? They're like, yeah, they work. But they they were handy at the time. So you grabbed them. Now you use them the whole time. And as you use them, you think, God, I hate these things. That's what these tweezers are. These are my... I hate these tweezers. Where's my good? See, and I want my good ones, but I don't know. I laid them down somewhere. All right, moving right along. So, as usual, I uh, skip through and I don't look at instructions half the time. So this here and this here was supposed to go on after the body was put on. And the reason for is the body has the front bracing and all that. Um, and then this goes around the bracing. So, not that I wanted to but I end up having to remove the bracing out of the car. So I forget this is already bolted down, glued in, but that's okay, not a big deal. So I did the dash, I got, I spent a little time on this. It's not like the best, but it's kind of gets the point across. I did the little wire harness set up underneath there. Did the back of the gauges and did the front of the gauges. I just took a toothpick, a little orange paint, hit the dials. Like I say, nothing obviously legible or readable at all. Um, just to give it that illusion that it's got something going on in there. This part here goes in these two bolts here. Bolts. These two holes. And then the rest of the chassis can go together. Alright. Something like that. That's pretty cool. Can't forget too far. I got that steering wheel put in. I probably should have put that in before the other bar. But that's just how things go. Okay. So I'm not liking that because that steering wheel is not quite centered. So let's see that or this so frame here is a little on the offside. Or I have the gauge pod over to not far enough, but alright, last piece of the puzzle. Uh, this piece here. Ah, uh, just like that. So the only thing left I have is to finish the tires and paint the rest of the body. So chassis is done. I gotta put the two uh, just the two bottom pieces on yet. So that looks pretty good. I tell you what, this thing sits like really, really low. Oh, the tires glued on so it's kind of hanging out. I mean, that thing's like right there on the ground. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So on that I just got these two guys to glue on and the chassis should be completely done. Okay guys, so that is the build in its entirety for the chassis. So that is all set. Turned out pretty nice. It's not looking too bad. Did some coloring on that turbo pipe that looked pretty nice in the end. So I actually brushed that. I did not airbrush that. That's just with Tamiya clear blue and the Tamiya orange. So it looks pretty decent. I tell you what, this thing sits on the ground. Man, this thing is low. Yeah, the engine turned out pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. I was gonna wire it, but I see the the valve cover already had uh, plug wires already on the top, so I thought, well, I'm not gonna worry about it. So the pipe here, this is all stripped down, and I painted that with the gloss black, and then did the uh, stainless alkalade paint on that and the front air box itself um, this is here this is all front this is a flat aluminum so that turned out pretty cool so yeah we'll get the body out and we'll take a look at that in a few seconds here 
All right, guys. So we have this clear coated. It's pretty much cured out. Uh, it's got a few a few specks in it, but for right now, uh, I'm gonna leave it. I might polish it later, especially with the issues I had with the decals towards the end. So right now, we need to paint this black right here. And I had the worst time. I probably should do some black primer just up top, trying to cover that vent. Um, so I'm actually just gonna paint that black. Okay, so the hood turned out pretty nice with the front clip. Uh, so now we're going to get this guy same thing. We're going to get him taped up and we'll see how we can get this to turn out. So this has been sitting in a Susie Bake Oven for a couple days. Uh, she should be pretty well baked out. So I'm not going to do back of the window. I'm looking at instructions and everything and I don't see where that's painted black. Uh, just basically around here and around the front window. So we're going to concentrate on that and get the rest of it taped up. All right, so that actually painted up pretty nice. Nice and sharp looking. Like I said, I didn't do the back. Did around the front window. Just gotta touch up this blue here. So I'll touch this up and uh, get the windows in. I get a couple of the other trinkets in. We should be able to wrap this bad boy up. So we got that front clip looking pretty good. Like I mentioned before, I could not get this to cover. Uh, I should have did that in black first, like this whole thing, or maybe even all the blue, and then did that. But I like that, it looks pretty good. I know it's probably not prototypical, but it is on my car. So another thing I did, because I wasn't sure what to do with it, is I put foil underneath like it has heat shield. to give it a little extra touch, just something. Because I had a lot of blue underneath there, a little bit of, you know, weirdness going on. But I thought, you know what, that'll look good. So it is time to mate these guys and get this thing wrapped up. So see what she looks like when she's all assembled. 